I mean, we all remember being in school, right? How the playground was the center of our social lives or maybe the cafeteria, something like that. Well, thanks to COVID, a lot of students just don't have that anymore. But what they do have now is easy access to technology during class, thanks to remote learning. And a lot of kids are using computers that are on loan from the school districts. And a lot of them we found out are using them for way more than schoolwork. Now, parents are wondering why Oregon's largest school district didn't give them a way to monitor what their kids are actually doing when they log on. Here's Kristen Severance. Back when school was in person, parents of young kids may have worried about what was talked about on the playground or at recess. But in most cases, an adult wouldn't be far away. Now, with school online, all of those conversations are online too. And some parents say Portland public school officials are not doing enough to monitor what's being said. I have no control over what happens in this Chromebook. And I have no control over what my kid is doing. Anna Gross has a third and fifth grader at Irvington Elementary School. She was surprised devices issued by Portland public schools don't have a parental control app. That had bothered me. But I just accepted it as part of everything else with this pandemic that, you know, we're stuck with it. Anna's daughter is in a learning pod with two other kids. The pod's instructor discovered the three students had been added to a chat through the Google Hangout app on the district issued Chromebook. The chat had grown to more than 120 students from at least three schools, Irvington, Sabin Elementary and Access Academy, an online school. The instructor only discovered it because she was looking at their screens. No other teacher could monitor what the chat was saying. And then I found a chat that had 128 people, participants on it. Heather um, Leon so has a fifth chat. grader at Access. She I found out about the chat through Google Anna, then read the messages on her son's device. You know, it's just periodically there were some red flags that came up. Students tried to remove themselves from the chat. They kept getting added back in, so they were sort of forced into this conversation, um, you know, against their will. There was a lot of um, users listed as unknown. Screenshots show all the unknown users. Someone posted an inappropriate cartoon. A seventh grader posted that they used their younger siblings login information to join the chat. And then that person posted a picture and said, here's me. I challenge everyone to post pictures of yourselves. Um, so that was really that was alarming. Another student kept repeatedly asking for everyone's email addresses. Uh, they also tried to get the kids onto a Zoom. You know, part of me wants to think that maybe I'm overreacting. But part of me is thinking, you know, what if this is a predator that is posing as, you know, another child and is trying to get my child or one of these other, you know, over 100 vulnerable children to share a photo. My children were fortunate. They were being supervised by an adult. But there are a lot of working parents who don't have the ability to supervise their kids. Irvington and Sabin shut off the chat to their students when they were notified. Access didn't. The chat was still active two weeks later. Kevin Crotchet is the director of learning technologies at Portland Public Schools. He does not believe the chat was set up with malicious intent. It, it grew and grew until we had uh, apparently um, quite a few kids uh, from a number of schools, ranging in ages, um, talking with each other, uh, doing what in my perspective, kids do online, which is they engage socially. From your perspective, can you see why the parents of the elementary school kids were upset when they found out about it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm a parent of two myself. Um, I definitely can understand. I mean, it's, it's alarming to all of a sudden find out that this is there um, and to, to see that it's being used, you know, in a, in a very kind of unsupervised way. Crotchet said the users may have been listed as unknown, but they were all PPS students. And while the chat was disabled for two schools, he said Google Hangouts is directly tied to the Google Video Meets function. Shutting off the chat district-wide would also turn off the Video Meets app, something teachers need. And this is one of those weird things about technology. It's like, why would Google Hangouts chat affect Google Meets? And I'm not, I'm not a computer engineer, I can't tell you that. <laughs> but the systems are, are very integrally tied. He said while the district can monitor devices, they do not have a parental control app, but they are looking into it. 
Parents have other options through their internet provider. If they've got uh, you know, any one of the major companies, they have parent controls on those. While we don't have a lot of the solutions on the Chromebook that's being loaned by Portland Public, there are definitely some solutions um, there as well. Anna so points to other large two, school so districts that already have these tools. The Reynolds School District uses Securely, which provides both teacher supervision and parental controls. Beaverton has Classroom Orchestrator, which allows the teacher to see the student's screen in real time. I would like PPS to give some parental controls to the Chromebook. I want to be able to set limitations. I want them to be very transparent about what limitations and restrictions they have set. I want them to be transparent about the security. I want them to talk about this. Again, Portland public school officials are looking into adding some sort of parental control option on the devices. So PPS, though, they, they say that it would be a real issue if they shut down Google Chat district wide. But has any other school district encountered this or done that? Yes, Beaverton. So their chief information officer told me Google Chat is something really districts across the country are struggling with. He said there's no limit to the number of students that can be added to a chat. Kindergarten students could be chatting with middle or high school students. He said there's no ability for IT personnel to delete the groups. I mean, it's a nightmare, and that's why Beaverton disabled Google Chats for the entire district. Well, hopefully other people will figure out a way to follow. Mm -hmm. Kristen, thank you. You bet.